Well, I'm back to another episode of Albums and Memories, where I talk about a couple of albums each episode, and I talk about the memories I have with them. Now, today we're going to talk about a couple of albums by the same musicians, uh, or the same band, and they are the Mars Volta, and I'm going to talk about the first two albums. Um, the last in the co- the last in the the last in the comatorium and Francis the Mute. I am so sorry for that flub. And you know what? A bit of a flashback. Cut to like early or cut to around 2011. Um, I'm waiting for the newest Red Hot Chili Peppers album. Um, and I really this is pretty much when I'm with you was just about to re-release. There was no new singles around. So I kept checking Wikipedia every day, and if you check Wikipedia, you know that the first one, the first thing you see on the right-hand side is like a picture of a band. In terms of the right-hand chili pepper, you see a picture of the band followed by like the the past, the current members of the band, and below that the past members. And around there is the associated acts, and one of them. I saw was a band called the Mars Volta, and I got really interested in it for some reason. I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna like see what they got. So I looked looked on the Wikipedia page, and I'm like, okay, this is interesting. I don't know what's going on here, but I'm just gonna check it out. And so the first song I heard from them was The Widow, and I actually really really enjoyed it. And so the next song I listened to after that, after I listened to that song about like seven like five or six times was another song from was another song from their first album. The widow was from French the Mute, but the first out another the next song I heard from the next the next song I heard was a song called Drunken Ship of Lanterns. And I really enjoyed that song and so I kept like I listened to a little bit more, including a song called La Via La Vasquez. La Via La hold on a minute. It's called La Via La Viaquez. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm sorry. I am very sorry if I'm pronouncing some of these things wrong, like I did with the first album's title. But, um, yeah, it, the only reason I actually listened to that current song, like, because John Frusciante did the first two solos, guitar solos in that song, and then the third, um, the third solo was pretty much, um, the guitarist, like, Omar's solo, and it's 11 minutes, so I'm like, okay, this is fine. And then I finally heard Cassandra Gemini, which is a 32-minute monstrosity, which I really love. And so I got to talking with a classmate of mine in college, uh, a, like uh, around a couple of days after I heard The Widow, and he's like, oh yeah, I love the Mars Volta. I only know that one song, though. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to keep reaching for to see what other songs I can find. So I listened to a couple of more. And then around two, I didn't get around to buying an album by them, until two years later when I started working and I actually bought these two albums for the first time, like at the same time I bought these two albums and I remember like being okay, I didn't know which one would be better um, and I didn't know which uh, album would be better in terms of um, longevity but I found like at first I got really into this one, uh, the Laos, because it was more like atmospheric and it was more creepy at times and then when I got like when I got really into it, I ended up going for Francis the Mute. And um, these two albums, the memories I have for these two albums were mostly pretty much college and my first the first month I started working. Those were pretty much the exact like um, things that I can actually like see myself when I listen to these albums, like. Not seeing this stuff, but you know, whatever. And so I just remember playing Kill Zone for PS2 while I was listening to this album a lot. And then I kept listening to this album anytime I would take a bus home or to work. Like, in terms of the song, because I don't have a CD player, a portable CD player. But like, these two albums were in my CD case for about five weeks, five, uh, three or five months. And then I just kind of got a, got tired of them because I ended up buying other albums that I needed space. But you know, these albums are actually pretty um, uh, good in terms of like how much they built up. Like 
yeah, there was a lot of complaints about how much atmosphere they put into the music. Like, it doesn't, it could be caught, and I understand that, especially with Francis the Mute, because, like, this is actually a much better album. Like, in terms of Mars Volta albums, I figure these two are the best albums. And here's the thing I've been trying to find their third album everywhere. I, I mean, I could order their third album online. I genuinely could. But I remember going to the store and saying, hey, I, I like, to bar- like to order the third album. I'm like, okay, it'll be here in two weeks. And it's been four months, and I still haven't gotten a call from them. And I really am disappointed because I wanted to listen to that album immediately. But as it is, I can listen to these albums, like, right now. Like, okay, I just remember, I remember this, like, with Killzone on PS2 in an early morning, and when I used to play Counter-Strike a lot, back before I started having internet in this house, and instead just went to the library and just played Counter-Strike for the next four hours while listening to this album. This is an hour-long album, but it goes by really fast because, like, you know, it's very tight in terms of, like, longevity and each song, you know. And then there's, like, Francis the Mute, which is... I think is their best album, and I genuinely think that, um, yeah, there are some things that can be cut out, but uh, I would have loved this album a lot more if they had the title track, because I didn't, I bought this album in 2013, and I didn't know about the title track until 2015 or 16, and I'm like, why wasn't this part of the album? It's like, maybe, like, maybe it could have been a double album, but that would have made things a little too long, like, the title track is 15 minutes. And the shortest song on this album is two minutes. Well, the main structure of the song is two and a half minutes, and then it keeps going for atmospheric reasons for about another minute and a half, which threw me off the first time I heard this. And so, like, and then the next song, that the next shorter song is, um, what was it, 11 minutes, I think? Miranda's, I, I forgot the title, like, the track listing, but other than The Widow, every song is over six minutes long. And so, like, I get why they actually had to take that title out, title track out of the album. I get it. It's just that it took me a couple of years to find the title track, Branches of Mute, which is an amazing song. I mean, sure, I usually used to skip, like, the first three minutes because it's just bells and, like, not bells, um, chiming and bells and whistles and whatnot, and it just builds up and builds up, and then it just explodes. And I get why, like, I get why they did it, because this whole album is pretty much atmospheric and creepy. But then again, like, this album is about suicide. Uh, this guy, this album is about, like, being in a coma, a man who is in a coma. I forgot the, I got, forgot most of the rest, because I have the story right here. Uh, like, I have the story on my laptop, and I haven't read it yet. But it's about like some crazy shit happens in this home, but then he wakes up and he kills himself. And this one is a lot darker. It talks about like, oh, I forgot. But here's the thing: it's more like the memories I have with these albums, and I actually have decent memories of it. Like, it's mostly because of me playing video games like early in the morning when I didn't have work. But really, I recommend this to anybody who's into prog rock. I mean, I wasn't really into prog rock all that much, but you know. It's, um, like, uh, man, if it wasn't, again, if it wasn't for the Red Hot Chili Peppers on Wikipedia, I would never have heard of these people. No, I would never have heard of them, but, you know, I'm really interested. I know for a fact that people are, like, after these two albums, they kind of, the quality kind of goes downhill. But I really like want to get their third album, mostly because I want to listen to Telegamatron. Is that how I'm saying that right? Telegamatron? Telegamadon? Okay, their second song from the third album. Oh, fuck, I forgot, about, I forgot the third album's title, too. Okay, I'm having a brain fart. This is not going to be my best thing. So, because it's the second track from the third album, it's 11 minutes long, no, 15 minutes long, and I feel like it's amazing, it would be a lot more amazing if I had the album and put it on a stereo. But as it is, I'll listen to these two albums until I get the third album, which will probably take another two years. But I'll figure it out. So, um, thank you for watching this. I recommend these two. If 
like these albums came out in 2003 and 2005, so um, I should have actually gotten into it a lot more. So um, until then, until the next uh, albums and memories, and when I can explain myself a little bit more, uh, thank you for watching and take care.